Hello and welcome to Vice Man Channel. Today we're going to talk about the latest within RFID hacking. It's another news episode. And starting off with that is uh, DEF CON and CCC camp that was happening in August. It was a blast. I ran around and, you know, met so many people. It was totally awesome. I missed all the talks and uh, that doesn't matter because apparently the talks is coming out on uh, their respective YouTube channels right now. So you can watch them there as well. I've been able to watch some of them, but not too many. With that said, I do have some gifts that I got during DEF CON. So this is for Colin O'Flynn himself, the hardware legend that was inside or within our little RFID hacking community some years back ago and did some improvements. And he wrote the most beautiful, uh, uh, he signed the book very much beautiful to me. So yes, I spent, I'm not worthy, no, I'm not worthy. And we both know uh, I proved my point to that one. And I know it's, it's, it's fun to Build such an amazing what he says always great to have such an amazing and fantastic community and you are a little bit better at it I don't know about that uh, thank you so much for this book it's gonna be on my website I'm gonna read about it and I love it speaking of which during this time in DEFCON uh, I got some swag and that swag includes actually one of the Pico EMVs that uh, actually Colin himself built. So I managed to build this one and it's going to be awesome. It works. I uh, need to build some new tops. I got some hints for that. I'm going to drop some comments about where you can find this one. It didn't take me very long to do, even if my soldering skill sucks, but still. Easy to upload the firmware. Uh, Leonard did a good job with that. So that's kind of cool. Speaking about more things that happen, I also got a JTagulator uh, from Parallax. A little bit older model, but doesn't matter. Works the same. Haven't been able to hook it up. Used my hooks in like that before. Another dude that I finally got to meet was MG, you know, the guy and the dude who does the most famous uh, OMG cables. So I got some cables and a hookup or flasher because you need that as well. Apparently people don't understand, but you need a flasher when you buy his stuff. But it's uh, it's a very nifty handwork, I must say. It's, uh, it's amazing. And speaking about badges and all that stuff you can do, I'm going to take this away a little bit. I'm going to go back and talk about the CCC camp. And this here is the CCC camp uh, badge. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, let's see if I find the on button. Boop. Here we go. On button has this nice little um, multicolor LEDs. This interesting way of selecting apps, you can download things and you can see all this kind of awesome thing. If you go into Disco, it looks a little bit better. Shines up during the night. I thought it was awesome. This is capacitor uh, sensors, so we can actually change things in the UI for this. But yeah, that was amazing. And that was the CSC camp. Uh, it was completely different though. Um, while Vegas is a... What do you call it? Let me do this. While Vegas is a you know um, endless stream of uh, casinos and sound and noise, uh, I must say CCC camp this year. This is my second. Uh, it was like going to Burning Man. It was like going to a festival more than a camp. It was awesome that sound. It was music, sounds, and technology mixed up in a lovely thing. I missed the rains the first night because I back to back. I missed so many people that I wanted to see there. I'm sorry I didn't. I didn't see Henrik Plerk, I didn't see uh, Carlos Mayer and I didn't see all other people who was there. <sighs> Maybe next time. So many people to meet. I did meet however uh, these guys who made Reborn Hack again and they made their bitch, which is an RFID enabled thing. I haven't figured out what it does yet, but uh, I got the link from saying that now that the firmware is up and working. So that would be cool. Uh, looks great. They have their own cap. And speaking of badges from all things that, I've got also, thanks to Evil Demon from Australia, a 
old. This is just for PCB, of course. Oops, you can't see it. Maybe I do like this. Maybe it's better. Yes, here we are. This is just for PCB for this badge from 2019. This is a Magstripe uh, program goal one. Uh, I need to solve this one. So that's just going to be awesome. Thanks, Evil for it. was just beautiful. Now, what more has happened? That was DEF CON and, and CC camp and um, gadgets that I got and all that stuff. Uh, what's news going on in the RFID world? Well, uh, Proxmox 3 um, released their... Uh, just recently we dropped the... Yeah, we dropped a new release, basically. That's what you say it is. You know, we client the firmware. And... Um, we usually have a vote on the Discord server about it and this year, or this time, uh, the community voted for the name Raccoon. So yes, we have uh, a nice little uh, Raccoon <laughs> release. So feel free to, uh, to download that one. It's coming out on the package managers. But uh, speaking from experience, it's always better to be on the latest source. But if you can't, the release is good. Um, what more was it? This release does uh, Logix simulation is back to working again, and thanks to Gentle Kiwi, Benjamin Dupli, and user D18C7DB, I don't know what that name is, but they figured out why the 14B commands was working very badly on the Proxmog, and especially not the Proxmog ECs, but out of the four. Turned out that the pin for sending the signal out was well, it's like, you know, sending too strong signal when it's supposed to be a weaker signal but that was sorted in the FPGA firmware so it's a good thing to uh, update your Proxima God before if you want to have some better support now what more do we have we have Chameleon Ultra I have seen that there is an iOS app an Android app desktop UI the firmware updates all the time. I see some uh, proof of concept to see why uh, a default BLE pairing key would be bad. And if you have BLE pin issues, the default key is one, two, three, four, five, six. I will do a video about the iOS app uh, eventually and the Android app to see how that works. With that said, um, one of the major developers of the desktop UI, Game Tech Live, and myself, we got an interview by Lab 401 about a week, uh, two weeks ago, and you can see them here, look, unveil, and the team behind the programming. So this is awesome. You should go over and watch them and listen to Game Tech and understand that actually he's only 15 years old. Now, do you know what? <laughs> do you know something else that's older than that developer on that UI? WiggleNet. WiggleNet, yes, turned 22 years old. That's amazing. That's the worldwide war drive that they're known for, and they've been collecting Wi Fi networks. Uh, and many of them, it's like over 1 billion networks found of recently. That was just crossed this spring. And I met the guys on uh, the RF Hackers Village. Uh, Aksana and the whole of the rest of the dudes there, amazing intelligent people and I like, I love the voxels and I do love what we're doing and yes. So how do you do that? How do you celebrate that one? Well, you could do like everybody else, you know, you could buy yourself a nice, nice, nice Iceman branded t-shirt at my merch store nowadays. Yes, I have a merch store. Why? I don't know why. Why not? Uh, I think it's cool. You find it uh, on a link below. Uh, I get some commission out of it. Not much, but if you do, do it. I love to see it though. The mugs are kind of cool though. Uh, at the CCC camp, uh, one of the other community members, Simba, uh, he bought a hoodie and he came out with it and it was kind of awesome seeing that on CSC camp, seeing someone running around with your merch. Uh, another guy uh, told me that his three-year-old daughter uh, looks at the t-shirt and says and makes some funny monkey sounds about it. So I think that's kind of awesome as well. Peace and love, or as Evil Demon says, uh, unity. Uh, I think that's kind of awesome. 
What more rumors do we have? Uh, oh God, so many rumors. Uh, I've seen so many flipper rumors for lately, so you don't believe it. Um, one of them is that there is a simpler hardware revision for flipper in the makings. Maybe a flipper nano, flipper easy, I don't know. But apparently something simpler. Uh, something towards more of Arduino hole, so that's interesting. I also heard about an add-on with EMP, like the EMP ship shouter thing, because I'm interested in that right now, and it's all done, but it's not released or for sale or anything like that, which sounds awesome. I also heard about there's a clear case flipper, if you know what I mean, because the flipper usually has this whole white case and uh, that was a clear case coming up from Sasquatch. Uh, he has an awesome video channel talking about things and he makes better videos than I do, but it doesn't matter. But you know, he edits them, I don't. And it was kind of cool. Um, anyway, with that said, other rumors. All right, great. Um, let's see, when it comes to our 3 hacking, I heard about iClass Tiroff. Uh, another user in the community has been having some fun and doing some Really funny impacts of tearing things. Uh, took it one step further than I thought that he would have done. But so yeah, that was interesting. Uh, another thing is, uh, another down under guy thing is ICTS reader code injections. Um, so they managed to overflow something and make coding injections on the readers. Um, that stuff will be dropped later this autumn at a conference. Don't know which one yet, but one I know I will tell you or let you know. Um, another code injection thing on point of sales using a modified NFC or making their own NFC apps on Android, that was the talk, one of DEF CON talks, is also out, which is kind of awesome. A third thing, if you ever heard about the TASTIC RFID project, you know, weaponizing in a, on a reader, which is kind of uh, common nowadays. Uh, FISH, another uh, user in our community down under, he's actually going to talk about his improvement to the TASTIC RFID uh, project. Um, oh God, I'm, I'm going to get so much shit because I can't remember this. Uh, that was the, what was the names? Mm. Brad, I know it's Brad, and I know it's somewhere up. Oh, sorry about that one. Anyway, he calls it fantastic, and he's gonna talk about it on B-Sides Canberra. I'm looking forward to see his stuff and his improvements and uh, see what it's been doing. Um, <laughs> and more rumors. Uh, yes, uh, I can just show you this, just in order to, 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 uh, verify what nerf has been going on. Uh, in order to run, you know, we, we saw the, the Cedar app running an HID SAM on a, <laughs> on a flipper. We wanted to do the same, so we had to, you know, we had to sniff the traces out of this one from flipper and all that and do the same thing on, on the Proxmo OD4 because that's a SIM model under, under the skin of that one of the case. And it turns out after logic analyzing and uh, looking back and forth and gentle key development, the player has been an absolute uh, fantastic person ruining the whole weekend of mine and looking at traces and looking at assembly code and figuring shit out and realizing that uh, the firmware on the SIM module on the RV4 doesn't properly implement the T0 protocol on the 78, 78.16 uh, standard, uh, which apparently the HID SAM uses uh, multiply the full spectrum of it. That's kind of awesome. Uh, with that said, I think we're done. I don't have anything else to say. I hope you had a good time and, you know, like, subscribe and share with your friends and let me know the gossip or whatever you want to see. Have a good one. Bye.